show you how to design a ductwork system for a three-ton air conditioning unit uh, inside of this house right here. Um, now most of the, the hard work has already been done. We already have our CFM values and um, this is cubic feet per minute of how much air needs introduced into this room, how much cooled comforted air needs introduced into this room in order to combat the heat gain that is coming in through our windows, our ceiling, and our floor. Etc. Um, in order to get this value here, we have to know how much heat in BTUs is, is coming into this room during the summer. So what we've done prior uh, to me showing you this is we've done a load calculation on this house and we've determined that you know with the building materials, the orientation of the home, the color of the roof, the type of insulation, uh, construction materials, all of that, um, that this room needs 300 CFM of air in order to maintain uh, you know, a 72 degree temperature on the hottest day of the year for the area that we're in. So each of these rooms has a value associated with it to, um, you know, for us to design duct to carry that air into that room in order to maintain a stable temperature during the summer. So we're gonna use this, I'm gonna show you uh, we're going to draw in the duct and show you how to uh, kind of lay this out. Um, but to know what size of duct we need for the airflow, we're going to have to use a duct calculator. So this is the super cool slide rule. Um, it's a pretty, a pretty handy tool. There's a lot of uh, different types of formulas and data tables and, and things like that on it. So um, I do recommend it. It is a pretty good duct calculator and has a lot of uh, useful information on it. So, um, so let's look at this top room here. So we have 100 CFM that that room needs. That's a laundry room, I believe. And 100 CFM in order to maintain the temperature. And so what we do is we take um, our CFM value right here and we line it up with um, 0.08 inches of static pressure. Now, sometimes with flex duct, um, you can go up to 0.1, um, but just somewhere right in that neighborhood. Now, if you're designing for um, smooth sheet metal, um, you know, non-insulation non lined, um, we would go down here to 0.08, just like where we are here. So, um, if we do go up to 0.1, it doesn't really change our value uh, all that much in this, this small amount of CFM. So, start off here at 0.08 and we'll look down here at our round vinyl flex our round vinyl flex so it's going to fall in between a 7 and an 8 and like I said if you designed a 0.0, 0 0.1 you know we would be a little under 7 so um, 7 inch is is approximately what we're uh, what we want and this is the size of duct that we're going to run to that room so let me pull out my next sheet I've got some of this drawn up already. So you'll see we've got a seven inch run right here coming up behind our, our door. So duct placement, uh, register placement is also a very important part of this. You know, in this, if this is a laundry room and the washer and dryer is here, you wouldn't want to put the, the supply register under the washer or dryer. Um, it's going to make it very difficult uh, you know, to, to do its job if it's being blocked. So you know, typically out of the way in some some form or fashion, um, you know, just so that it, you know the the homeowner doesn't place anything on top of it uh, or or close it off for any reason. So, so looking at this um, 100 CFM, we've ran a seven inch duct to it. Now, if we look at our seven inch duct, you know, we may or may not be at 100 CFM. Um, typically, at 0.1 inches of static, it's about 102 CFM. And so that number is really close, uh, but not exact. So you'll notice these little symbols here. Uh, looks like an L, kind of. Um, that is a volume dampener uh, to control our airflow. So they would typically come off of the ductwork, um, you know, pretty close to the main section, and then you would balance that by, uh, you know, closing it just a little bit in order to reduce the airflow to that register. You do that in conjunction 
was taking an airflow measurement here. Um, and then that way you know for sure that you're getting the correct amount of airflow to that room in order to maintain that temperature during the summer. So you can also see we've got a seven inch here, a seven inch here, a seven inch here. So all of these are pushing out approximately 100 CFM of air. Um, they all have volume dampeners on them. Um, you know, this room is the only one so far that needs 100. So we have 200 CFM in the kitchen that this uh, room needs. So this is only half of the airflow that this, this room needs. And then our two runs down here is only two thirds of the airflow that this room needs. But I've only drawn this small section of duct um, and there's a little bit of, of information here. And let's talk about that. So our duct, our main duct section um, is going to be sized using also the super cool slide rule or the duct calculator. Um, but we have a three ton system in this building. Uh, typically a, a system, uh, air conditioning system requires 400 CFM of air per ton to su support the refrigeration process. And so what we've done is we've taken that 1200 CFM value and lined it up with 0 0.08, so 0 0.1, 0 0.09, 0 0.08, 1200 CFM. And then we've come down here and looked to see what size of duct we have. So you look at the smaller dimension uh, most of the time, if you're buying prefabricated sheet metal, the smaller dimension is going to be an 8, a 10, or a 12. Uh, typically, 8 is your most common size that has uh, the most options available to it um, as far as, as various sizes of duct. Um, it's what I typically ran whenever, whenever I was doing duct work and had my business. So, um, so we would look at the 8 and come up here. So it's not an 8 by 30, but it is an 8 by 28. Those are increments of two, uh, you know, in between those. So an 8 by 28, which is what we have here, is capable of producing 1,200 CFM. So 1,000, 1,100, 1,200 at approximately 940 feet per minute. So the velocity scale here is also important because if our velocity gets too low, then the ability to move that air, uh, that, that a volume of air um, through the ductwork system diminishes. So the lower the velocity, the slower the air moves. And if the air is moving too slow, it's just going to, to dissipate in that ductwork. It's not going to make it to where it needs to go. So typically, um, the value we're looking for is is approximately 800. Um, 800 to 1,000 is usually what we shoot for inside that main trunk line in order to carry the air through the entire system um, you know, without it stopping. So if we look at, again, 1,200 CFM, so 1,000, 1,100, 1,200, you know, we have between 8 and 1,000 feet per minute and actually 940 feet per minute, which we've got written right there. So um, this first section of duct is able to support are, are three tons of refrigeration by moving the correct amount of air, 1200 CFM, it's 400 CFM per ton, and moving it at um, the required velocity of 940 feet per minute or in between 800 and 1000. So um, that's something else this super cool slide rule has is our recommended duct velocities. Um, you know, our main duct it has at 800. Uh, commercial, you know, obviously everything increases um, the reason for this is that, uh, you know, residential is so much slower than commercial and industrial because, you know, you're sitting there in your, in your living room trying to read a book. Um, if you have 1,500 feet per minute of air going through your ductwork, you're probably going to hear your system running um, a significant amount. So um, you'll hear that wind noise, that air noise, and it's not always what you want. So, but in commercial and industrial environments, it's not a big deal. Um, they don't particularly care about the air noise that much. But residential, they do. We do bring it down so that um, you can't hear the air coming out of the vents as much. So, but between 800 and 1,000 is typically okay. Um, I usually try to hover about that 900 mark on the, on the main duct. So we don't ever want to drop below 600. Um, so if it looks like we're getting to that point, 
then we need to size down the, uh, the duct um, to the next size down in order to increase our velocity. So um, it's kind of like uh, pushing uh, water through a smaller hose. It's going to move faster um, you know, coming out of that hose. You know, just think of a pressure washer versus a, a garden hose. Um, you know, even though even if the pump's not running, it still has a tendency to throw that water out further because of the smaller opening that it has. So, so what we've done is we've got our first four runs off of this system. Um, this reduces our total air volume by 400 CFM. So we've got one, two, three, 400 CFM that we've removed from this main duct, and now we are less 400 CFM less than what we are than when we started with so this this duct this 8 by 28 now has 800 CFM of air flowing through it um, you know when we get to this point so if we look here and to just verify our velocity if we take and line up an 8 by 28 which is the duct we have right now slide that just a little bit and look up at 800 CFM, so that's the 400 CFM that we've removed from the 1200 that leaves us with 800. We'll look and see, we are getting really close to 600 feet per minute. So that's where we want to stop with that 8x28 duct, and we want to size down to the next size. So if we come up here again to our, our top scale. Uh, with our friction loss and line up 800 CFM with our 0.08 inches of static. And then come back down here and look, we have an 8 by 20 that would meet the requirement of 800, feet per, uh, 800 CFM um, with a velocity between 800 and 1000 feet per minute. So um, the next size of duct that we would use would be a uh, 8 by 20. So this is called a reducing plenum system, a reducing duct system. Um, you know, it is going to reduce the size of that duct as it, as it travels the length of the building. And as it does that, it, um, you know, it deposits the air where it needs it, but also reduces the size of the duct in order to increase our velocity. So we have an 8 by 20 with uh, three more runs that come off of it. One seven inch, so now we have 200 in our kitchen. We have 50 in our bathroom. Uh, this is a six inch duct, which if we look at six on the scale, lining up the six with our diameter, and look up here at 0.1 to 0.08, we have between 60 and approximately 67 CFM that this six inch run will carry into that bathroom. Well, 67 CFM is too much air for this bathroom. Um, you know, if we get introduced too much cooled air into a certain room, then that room will become cooler than the other rooms um, because the, the ductwork system is not balanced. It's not depositing the air evenly throughout the structure. So we also have a volume dampener installed here. Uh, that after the installation of the duct, you can uh, turn this down to reduce the airflow uh, that is being introduced into this room. Take a velocity measurement, take a CFM measurement in that room, and determine you know what it is that you need specifically for that in order to maintain the temperature that it requires. So you can see we've also put the other seven inch to make up the 300 CFM. So take note also of where our supplier registers are placed. We have. Uh, our supply registers are typically around our highest heat gain areas. They would be around doors, they would be around windows, um, and in places like that that uh, is, is allowing more heat to enter the structure uh, than other areas. So, so we have 800 CFM in this 8x20 duct at 850 feet per minute. We subtract 250 CFM from that. That leaves us with 550 CFM in that 8x20 duct. So if we look here real quick, just to verify our velocity, um, 8x20 at 550 CFM, 
we are we just barely dipped below our 600 feet per minute so we definitely want to to move to that next size of duct um, and it would be at 550 CFM so once again come up to this top scale here line up 550 CFM with 0 0.08 and then we'll look down here at our ducts. So we follow a little in between now. So we're, we're an eight by 14, eight by 15. Um, you know, unless you're making your own duct work, uh, the size you're probably gonna find uh, is going to be an eight by 14. So most of, most of our duct is in even increments um, on the long side. So if we slide that just over just a little bit to eight by 14, so that we can have our correct measurement, then we can see that 550 CFM is approximately 800 feet per minute. So you could go down to the next size even, if you wanted to go down to an eight by 12, and then look at your velocity. So now we, we're up above 900 feet per minute. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep using this uh, 0.08 uh, value for our static pressure. So we're gonna maintain that eight by 14 that we started with just a second ago. So 550 CFM is you know, right at 800 feet per minute, um, a little closer to 790 actually. So now we've got our next section of duct, which is an 8 by 14, like we just discussed, um, 550 CFM at 790 feet per minute. We just have two runs that come off of this. Um, you'll notice uh, it's kind of an exponential decrease. So the less volume of air we have, the quicker we lose our velocity in this duct because the amount of air is, is constantly being decreased as we, we release it into this house. So 550 CFM, we subtract 200 from that and give us 350. So now if we look at our 8 by 14 at 350 CFM, we are once again below our threshold of 600 and we need to bump it back up. So we will come up here again to our top scale, look for our CFM of 350, line that up with 0.08, and then we'll come down here and find that next size of duct. So it looks like eight by 10 would be a, a good logical choice. Eight by 10, 350 uh, feet, uh, CFM will give us about 700 feet per minute. So you'll notice that, that even though you know, we're using this, this scale and the same numbers of, of friction loss, our 0.08, you know, our velocity is slowly decreasing. And again, that's because the volume of air inside of our duct is, is becoming less and less as we make it towards the end of this, uh, this system. So, so our next run would be an eight by 10, or as I did in this one, we went ahead and jumped down to an eight by eight. So eight by 350 CFM at 0.08 inches of static um, would give us an eight by 10, but you'll notice if we drop it down to an eight by eight, We're looking at a little bit higher on this friction loss scale, and then it also increases our velocity though. So 350 CFM, that brings us up a little above 800, about 825 or 850, 850 feet per minute. And so we have 350 CFM at, well, I put 825, but I think it's 850. So, um, but this would, you know, finish off our our ductwork system for this house, for the supply, it would deposit the rest of the air into the room, uh, the rooms that it needed. So, um, and you'll notice too, we have 200 CFM in this room, but we ended up putting 250 into it, assuming that this door is going to be open most of the time, that there is an exhaust fan in this bathroom, that when it is closed, it's going to be on and pulling a little negative pressure that way, so it'll pull some of that conditioned air uh, towards the bathroom. Um, and concerning bathrooms, whenever you do place a supply run in here, 
uh, be very careful not to put it underneath the toilet or next to the toilet. Um, you know, it's it's a it's not the most pleasant thing in the world to have uh, air conditioning blowing on you uh, while you're using the restroom. So, um, if you want to avoid, you know, complaints or conflicts with customers, um, you know, try to try to be mindful of things like that as you're designing and installing this ductwork system. So that's a, a overview on how to design a three-ton ductwork system uh, for you know a pretty generic house that we have here. Uh, but that's about it. Thanks.